Barbeck is a proud sponsor of local H&R Preps. Kelly, I just got a new cell phone. It's awesome. And I just shot a video of Nick at the game tonight. Oh my God, he is so cute. I'll send it to you right now. We help you stay connected with a cute picture here and there. Buy local. Buy Barbeck. Hello and welcome to this week's Preps Preview alongside Justin Kahn. I'm Leroy Bridges. Kind of a midweek update for us this week, but still got to give some thoughts on last week's very exciting uh, city game between Eisenhower and MacArthur boys. It was a 54-52 win for Eisenhower. I thought going in, MacArthur was going to take this game. I thought maybe a little bit more consistent across the board. They led most of the game up eight uh, early in the fourth quarter. But Eisenhower had enough down the stretch. Uh, Robert Calmes was an absolute beast closing this game for the Panthers, and you turned out to be right in this one. I told you about Calmes. Yeah, I mean, he, he he's a good player. I, I do think that he's developed a lot from last year, and, and I know Athlone played pretty well, too. Yep. He can really get to the basket, uh, you know, really impressive with that. I You know, I know that uh, Reggie Anderson didn't play, and it was Chad Jones' first game back. Yeah. I still think, and I because I, I kind of, uh, you know, Waffle a little Waffle bit, a little bit and, and I feel like that when those two guys do get going and back in the lineup, but I don't know how they'll fit in. I know mm -hmm. with with the you know guys who have kind of uh, emerged for MacArthur, I'm not quite sure how they'll fit in, but I do think that MacArthur might end up being the better team by the end of the season. But you know from what I saw from Eisenhower uh, when I when I saw them play against Mount Zion, you know I thought hey this is a team that's made taken some steps and and thought they had a pretty good chance. So obviously it's a very close matchup though. It is. By far Marky e. Eflon's best game I've ever seen him play and I've seen a good five to ten games. Right. He was he was lights out. Uh, taking them off, beating them off the dribble, yeah, he's hitting really every that. jumper he took, taking good shots. That's one of the areas that I think going in that is very inconsistent with Marky e. was taking care of the ball, yeah. uh, careless turnovers, and then taking terrible shots which is equal to a turnover when when you just launch something with no chance of a rebound. And he didn't do that early. Uh, he carried the Panthers through three quarters. I think he finished with 24, and then Robert Calmy's three dunks in the final three minutes. <laughs> minutes Sparks a 12-0 run, goes on an 8-0 run himself that Coach Phillips said felt like a 20-0 run, and just took that game over in MacArthur's gym. Just so impressive down the stretch. You see a, an Eisenhower basketball player just take over a game, and it was, it was refreshing to see. You know, I don't know what it is, Leroy, but nobody dunks when I go to games. It's, it's only you. It, people, when I show up, it's just like no dunk. Yeah, I saw, I think, a dunk every Eisenhower game in the turkey tournament, and they were losing most of those games. All right. of them, they lost all those games. And Chris Martin threw down one. Calmes threw down a couple in, in a series of games. Calmes so. did throw down a couple dunks against Mount Zion, but, uh, you know, not three not, in, in, in a, a in a. In a <laughs> That's, that's a stretch that I, I'm not sure I'll see in a long time. My, and Myers Leonard had some stretches, but yeah. I didn't see anything like that from, from him. Uh, moving along, uh, this week's top five, what's your, what's yours looking like uh, this week? Well, I, I tried to uh, change things up a little bit, okay. I, but though there's not a ton of change here. Uh, I have moved Sarah Gordo into my top five. Welcome um, aboard uh, the Sarah Gordo uh, <laughs> train. I, sure. I got you. Yeah, yeah, I'm jumping on. Right. I'm jumping on with him. Sounds good. Uh, number four, I have Effingham and St. Anthony. Uh, I believe they've won 11 straight. That's impressive. Uh, number three, Windsor. Um, you know, they haven't, I don't know if they've played since the T-Town game. I know there was some, you know, weather and stuff no. like that. So, um, the only reason to really, I think I, think I did move them down. You did. Though. You did. You bumped them down a notch. But, well, you know, I just like Nokomis. I really do. And, and I feel like, and we'll talk later about how I kind of feel like they're getting a little bit uh, you know, ha little hammered bit, in the polls. Yeah. So I, I have them in two and T-Town number one. Yeah, Nokomis and Derek Burke. I, I think that's your, that, that's your kind of your team. If you had a team uh, that you just kind of, I don't know, you like to see win, I guess. That's a weird way to put it. But, but yeah. you know, you're always kind of looking for that Nokomis box score. Mine's Windsor. Uh, well, I, 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 no, I'm Windsor's mine. I've been on Windsor, <laughs> too. You have it. You have it. <laughs> Looking at my top five, uh, Sarah Gordo staying at number five, 10 and 2. Um, the Broncos really having a great start to the year. Lincoln, got to keep them in there. They're still a top five or a top ranked team yeah, they are. in 3A. Uh, so I'm keeping them there, even though they've been kind of inconsistent. I know three losses on the year. And they lost last Friday to Springfield High and then turned around and beat Southeast, which yeah. is a very good team. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't that. solve that team. I think two losses, actually, for Lincoln. <clears throat> uh, move along. Yeah. Nokomis at number three. Uh, the Redskins, I've got there. Pretty consistent. My top two kind of shuffled. I was wrong. I, I had flipped uh, Windsor and T-Town. 
I was wrong last week, so I apologize about that. But Windsor back in the two spot at 14 and one, um, and then number one, two topless. So Windsor could get another shot at them at, yeah. at the national trail tournament. So that that conference tournament is going to be awesome because FAM yeah. St. Anthony, who I have yet to jump on board with yet, right? Uh, you know, they're in that conference too, so that should and, be good. You know, and you know, voters statewide really haven't jumped on the St. Anthony bandwagon yet either. I know they they almost got in the top ten last week, and then they somehow lost ground this week, and, and I'm a little confused on that because, I, like I said, they won 11 straight. Their losses are to Mount Vernon, who I believe is a 3A team, and then um, to Reese Central, yeah. who's a highly ranked uh, 2A team. They lost by two points the first game of the season, and, and they've been on a real, a real good roll. They have some big games coming up. I know they have uh, Windsor coming up, of course, the uh, that tournament, so the National Trail Tournament, so a lot of tests for them. We'll, we'll learn a lot about them here in the coming weeks. Interesting to see that happen in the polls. Also, Windsor uh, fell to number seven. Yeah. Um, I am the lone voter in the polls, ranking them number one in the state. I know they lost to Tutopolis last week. Salt Fork is the defending state champs, and I think they might have just about everything back. Uh, but I'm still sold on Windsor. I'm going to keep them there for now. And I, I'm not so sure where Windsor would be if I didn't have them number one. I, I mean, I don't know why they drop from a loss to T Town. That doesn't it, make any they sense. They would drop from four to seven. And if they weren't getting all the points from my first place vote, they might not be in the top. They'd probably be maybe 10 or 9. And so, kind of interesting to see that happen. Uh, well, I'm going to try and get on the pollsters this next week and there, see what's up. There is a lot of politics in this, you yeah. know, where, where there's a team where somebody, hey, these guys need to be moved up, these guys need to be ranked, and, all, and so, you know, voters go, okay. And, you know, I think they're, they're trying to make it right, but then sometimes they make mistakes by saying, oh, they lost this game, we'll drop them, and maybe not the right move there. Nakoma is kind of one of those teams, too, that's, that's yeah, fallen right. a little bit, even though they've continued to win. Right, and now they've, they stayed where they were last week, yeah. but I don't know that there's a 118 – that has a more impressive resume than they do. They have some really good wins against two A teams, and you know, I, I kind of obviously the Columbus goes in every game wanting to win, wanting to play their best. But I'd really like to see them kind of stick it to some teams to, to show everybody, hey, this you know, team is legit. Yeah, and, and I, people will find out. Lone loss, four A Granite City <laughs> on a last second shot, a four yeah. A team. And yeah. then we're talking one A here. The other side, uh, also looking in that one A poll, Sarah Gordo. They're just a, they're a one win away, I think, one yeah. big win from cracking that top ten. And if you asked me at the beginning of the year what county team would be ranked in one A, <laughs> I'm not sure where they would be on that list. Probably <laughs> not even in the top five. No, no. I sold, sold the Broncos short going in. They're like I said, they're in my top five in the area. Ten and two, they're playing and, and, really well. And, and I mean, Tim Weaver. You know, he might be one of the best players. He's definitely yeah. a player of the year candidate in the For county sure. right now. I, you know, there's it's kind of a muddled situation that I think right now he's the name I'm thinking that kind of comes to my mind when I think of uh, county player of the year. Yeah, and again, just kind of a surprise. I don't know. We, we missed that boat a little bit early on, I think. Definitely. Uh, looking at the girls' side of things just real quick, uh, polls coming out this week. Just kind of something that caught my attention, Tuscola. They fell out of the top ten. They were number ten last week. They didn't lose, so a little bit more inconsistency there. And we, you know, voters statewide, we send out updates and we try to make sure we include all the top ten teams and what they did, and kind of our own little opinion. Maybe you know, this team is a good choice. I voted for them uh, going into this week. I didn't last week, right, and yet yeah. they still fell. Kind of a strange. Uh, <laughs> and they won I, their only game. They won exactly. their only game they played. I don't know what changed. I, I do know if the Warriors continue to win. I think that, that ranking will take care of itself, though. So. And they have some big games coming they up. Do. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll find out a lot about them yeah. as well. Um, my team, the, the girls' team I'm going to talk about is Nioga. They were a team at the start of the year that we thought could really make some noise and, and be good. I mean, looking at the roster, yeah, you, yeah. it's just natural. I think three, three six three, footers. Three, six footers. So. And they, they had a ton of losses early. I and mean, we, we sent them out as a, a team to watch early yeah. in the season. They had a ton of losses early, kind of fell off our radar a little bit. And, uh, you know, they've been playing a lot better lately. They had a, a big win over uh, Cumberland. Yep. They had they beat them by 18. They lost by 10 to T-Town, which, of course, is a 2A school. I think that's a pretty good performance. Uh, they have a game the 24th against Cowden Herrick Beecher City, which will be a, a great matchup. Number one team in 1A. Yeah, so. Exactly. So th that'll be a good one. Uh, you know, Marley Tarter and, and Erica Hotz lead that team. So th that's a team definitely to keep your eye on in uh, 1A girls. Might, might be a team to start picking and to pick them if you haven't been because yeah. they're playing well right now. Make sure you check that out online. Also, full coverage of basketball action all week long. We'll be on there. Uh, join us on the blogs. Uh, give us your comments and tell us what games to try and get out to. We'll see you out there.